But despite all the conspiracies that you can find on the internet, contrails are perfectly normal. I've heard that those white streaks we see crisscrossing the sky are part of a secret government experiment to control the population. Is that true? Oh yeah, there's some special Harvard sauce there. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now this is a... This must be a new... Jeez, really people? That's probably the second most wicked nasty one I've got yet, Mac. All done? Mix her up good? No. Let's do her some more. Yeah, this is a new one. Yeah. Oh, but that's just water vapor, uh-huh. Magical ice crystals. Jeez, what the hell is that? This is definitely... Sorry to shake, he's a long ways away. <clears throat> that is a brand new toxic mix. I have not witnessed that before. That's horrible. And there they go again. Holy shit. Really? So you think that's contrail, huh? <laughs> oh, man. The chemtrail conspiracy theory is exactly that, a conspiracy theory. But, like all good conspiracies, this one started with a grain of truth. Back in the 1950s, weather modification was all the rage. Sometimes, rain doesn't fall in dry areas, not because there isn't enough water vapor, but because there aren't enough dust particles that form the nuclei of raindrops for that vapor to start condensing around and form rain. So when scientists at General Electric in upstate New York figured out that by seeding clouds with condensation nuclei they could make it rain, well, that was a game changer. Small planes would be sent up to spray silver iodide particles into likely clouds over small areas. Small planes would be sent up to spray sent up to spray sent up to Silver iodide particles into likely clouds over small areas. Sometimes causing rain or snow to fall from those clouds. Over the years though, it became obvious that the cost of the seeding far outweighed the benefits of the rain that resulted. So most places stopped. Interestingly, one of the last holdouts was the Canadian River Basin right here in my corner of Texas. They were still doing it up until about a year or two ago as far as I know. But even if these experiments were limited and temporary, Word about them still got out. Strange planes spraying silvery looking powder had been spotted by people who didn't realize what they were doing and why they were up there doing it. That's why even now, decades later, people confuse ordinary condensation trails or contrails with so-called chemtrails. Those white streaks we see in the sky, they're contrails. But what they are and where they come from is no secret. Contrails form after jetliners have passed overhead. Little bits of pollution, dust and soot from their engines, act as nuclei for water vapor to condense around, forming these long ribbon-like clouds. And it's true that contrails can look pretty funky. They can linger in the sky for hours after planes have passed, and they can be stretched out and blown sideways by the wind. Multiple planes crossing in different directions can create these crisscross patterns. Scientists still actively study contrails, but despite all the conspiracies that you can find on the internet, contrails are perfectly normal. nozzles. Oh, belly spray coming. Shit. Oh, yeah.
nasty. Oh, more belly spray action. Mix that death up, criminals. Oh yeah, there's some special Harvard sauce there. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now this is a... This must be a new... Jeez, really people? we see in the sky aren't some secret military experiment. Does that mean that geoengineering isn't real? No, geoengineering is very real, although it's not yet practiced much. Okay, so if those strange stripes we see in the sky aren't some secret military experiment, does that mean that geoengineering isn't real? No, geoengineering is very real although it's not yet practiced much. How about that chocolate brown whatever? <laughs> Jeez. That's nasty. Amber, it's nice tail sprayer. Or excuse me, belly sprayer. Yeah, show everybody you're spraying us. Yeah. Yeah, that little belly makes some potent shit. What exactly is geoengineering? Today, scientists define geoengineering much more narrowly. As a deliberate, not accidental, large-scale intervention in the Earth's natural systems but the most famous, or perhaps infamous, type of geoengineering is what's known as Solar Radiation Management, or SRM. This is the method that shows the most potential for limiting the planet's warming. As it's relatively affordable, especially compared to the costs of unchecked warming, and it can be carried out with currently available technology and materials. Oh yeah, there's some more. You know, that is some nasty sauce, whatever that was. This is Lufanza 466. And not too far behind him is Air France 666. Or 66. They are building her up today. There's some dip belly spray there. Pretty sure I just seen some. Right under that local sun. Oh yeah, there's some more. You know that is some nasty sauce, whatever that was. And continues. Different DNA spray than fish sure always left. 
potent, I'm sure. You can see uh, solar shields are rocking. Okay, so now we got Air France 666. Solar radiation management is the idea of cooling down the Earth by increasing the amount of sunlight that gets reflected back to space. One way to do this would be to inject massive amounts of soot or dust into the upper atmosphere, where they would circle the planet for months and even years, mimicking the effects of a massive volcanic eruption. Another method is similar to the weather modification we talked about from the 1950s. But this time, cloud condensation nuclei, which could be something as simple as sea salt, would be sprinkled in areas over the ocean to increase the amount and the brightness of marine clouds. Both of these approaches would create a reflective surface like the mirrors except a lot cheaper, that would reflect the sun's energy back to space. The good thing is that these methods could be relatively adjustable. You could start small and then ramp them up, dialing in exactly how much cooling we need. The good thing is that these methods could be relatively adjustable. You could start small and then ramp them up, dialing in exactly how much cooling we need. Oh, we got some belly spray. There we go. There we go. There's a perfect example. There's some magical mix. You notice that plane only has two engines. But magically, look what's dumping out of the belly. Then we got Condor 2062. You can see just crossed their bullshit. The Condor 26-2, if I remember right, it has belly sprayer. Don't let that little bit of chemicals fool you, because they are dumping, as you can see. I think it's a little after four in the afternoon. Condor twenty sixty two. Yeah, you see he'll be adding to this bullshit. Look at that mess. All that was sprayed out of these damn airplanes. Oh, we got some belly spray. There we go. There we go. There's a perfect example. That's some magical mix. You notice that plane only has two engines. But magically, look what's dumping out of the belly. So that means that's some potent shit. While geoengineering is not ideal, it's a fix akin to, say, gastric bypass surgery. There's no question that if we continue on our current pathway, we may need it. Badly. Yes, of course it would have been better to live a healthier lifestyle for the last few decades instead of gorging on potato chips and pizza. It absolutely makes sense to study geoengineering, to ensure that if we ever need to implement such an extreme measure as deliberately engineering our planet, we know as much as we can about the side effects of the decision ahead of time. But conducting an experiment with the entire planet is like giving the entire human race an experimental drug at the same time. Is like giving the entire human race an experimental drug at the same time. Run, little birds, run. All right, Condor 2062, proving once again you're being sprayed and that contrails are bullshit. There you are, Condor, Condor. <laughs> 2062.
2062 demonstrating extra special spraying technique from the belly sector that sometimes I refer to as tail spray but you know what I mean all right oh we got some belly spray there we go there we go there's a perfect example that's some magical mix you notice that plane only has two engines My mom didn't tell me that the world is unreal.